It is Friday, May 6, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, and we got a ton of stuff to talk about. A ton. It wasn't even a full schedule on Thursday, and we've got we've got too much show, which I love. But I want to start with one thing, and maybe it just chafed me a little bit. I loved seeing, I love it when I see athletes supporting other teams in the town in which they work, okay? They're not all from that area. But, you know, it's fun when they root. So last night, we saw the Yankees who had the evening off. Aaron Judge, uh, Anthony Rizzo, DJ LeMahieu wearing their Rangers sweaters at the Rangers playoff game and then downing the bruise. Am I off base to think that those were shots of beer instead of full cups? Am I the only one that was caught by that? This is why we work so well together. I was just about to say the same thing. What were those? You know, know, I get I get it. Like this is New York. And if they're like slamming beers, they go and lose tomorrow. Maybe they'd have to like Whatever. answer the questions, but I think, come on, man, you got to give full beer, full chug. Who's the lineman for the Packers back Atari. Yes. David Bakhtiari. And then Aaron Rodgers did it. And then Christian Yelich did it. Full no one, beers. no one did it like the lineman. Like that's the way to do it guys. But you know yeah. what? I don't, Maybe they don't like beer. Maybe they're like, gosh, you really got to do this? I'm like, they're probably like old school vino type dudes. They're mm. very rich, all of them. Yes, they are. Well, and <laughs> some are ones about to get much richer yes. over the next several <laughs> months. But yeah, it just kind of bothered me. Like if you're going to do a beer, do the whole thing. Don't give me and like then, a shot of beer. And then if it's going to be like that, like let's go. Mm-hmm. You know okay, what's good. funny is, do you think they acted like, oh, I don't really do this on the regular? Like, those, those dudes know how to slam a beer. Come on. If you're over the age of 25, you have to know how to slam a beer. Aaron Judge, where do you go? Fresno State? Shoot. Yeah. 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 That's all there is to do out There's there. I can exactly. tell you that. I've driven, I've driven through parts <laughs> of that. It's ugly. All right. Let's focus on New York's other team. A miraculous comeback down 7-1 to one going into the top of the ninth. They put up a seven spot. They win 8-7. In Philadelphia, biggest ninth inning comeback by that franchise in 25 years. So better win for New York or tougher loss for Philly? It's a better win for New York. It really is. I mean, when you put together something like this, and this wasn't like an error-laden inning. It was, you know, maybe some bad pitches, but also like just grinder at bats, hard hit balls. They went through the lineup. Starling Marte gets two hits during the inning. Like it is, this is a win. I mean, down seven to one. This is a win that you can just, every time you're in a hole, now they can look back to Cinco de Mayo and say, boys, we did it before. And then this is another thing that Gabe Kapler can hang his hat on and say, look, dude, we're going to keep scoring runs because this type of stuff can happen. So, um, Big, big win by the Mets and everybody from Jerry to Todd Frazier. Everyone's saying it's different in Queens this year. It's different in Queens this year. And maybe they're right, dude. Uh, I I was watching it. Were you watching it live? Because it was on kind of a weird time out west for us. I, you caught, know, you might... I, I, I caught the end of it. Okay. So we were watching it during dinner. And Brady, our 16-year-old, was like, yeah, they're going to come back. When it was like seven to three, I was like, stop. They're not going to come back. You know, Knable's been great. He'd given up one run in 10 appearances this year. Pitched really well. Here's a few things that stuck out for me. Uh, some people criticize the Mets for spending a lot of money on guys in their 30s. And Starling Marte, first of all, that dude looks like he's about 22. He is so ripped. I cannot believe it. And then when he ripped that ball off the wall, I was like, yeah, you're all right. Number two. The number of contributions they got from guys who could have been DFA'd or sent down or something of that nature instead of Robinson Cano stuck with me, right? Jankowski pinch runs, scores the game tying run. I know Dom Smith went 0 for 4. He hit one pretty good earlier in the game. But J.D. Davis, who hasn't had a ton of opportunity, who's been a little banged up when he's got hit by pitches, hit a missile down the third baseline. Like, I know it looks easy for us to say, yo, get rid of Robinson Cano. You still have to swallow hard on 40 million bucks. I don't care if you're the richest owner in the sport. It's still not every team would have done it. And the Mets did it. And they showed you exactly why last night. And yeah, you know what? There is something different about this squad. 
They're just different. They all seem tuned in. They've got grown-ups there. They've got the biggest grown-up in the dugout. Good for Mets fans. I think it's going to be an awesome year. Yeah, the team's bought in. We talk about the length of their lineup all the time, and it showed here. Um, just good at bats. It looks like they were – I mean, they were swinging early in the count. I mean, they weren't – they weren't getting deep in the counts in this thing. They were going after attacking the ball. So, like, typically you think, like, oh, you know, they're just having really good at bats, like working the count. No, they were just going out there banging, dude. Mm-hmm. They trust themselves to swing at good pitches, and, you know, this was the result. But, again, like, this is – August comes around. You're tired, those dog days, and you're down in the hole by two or three runs in the ninth. Like, you can dig down back in the memory bank, that old baseball spank bank, and say, hey <laughs> – Remember May 5th, okay? It, they had lost 330 consecutive games from being down at least six runs in the ninth. 330. Dates back to 1997 to get that W. It was really cool. We do have to touch very quickly on Philly. I know Joe Girardi. We mentioned it on yesterday's shows coming under the heat lamp and then some. There was nothing he could have done last night. That's how every manager in the big leagues would have managed it. Get a younger guy out there. Let him start the inning. It's a six-run lead. He starts to blow up. Well, at some point, we got to get our closer in, who's been very good, as I mentioned. So, you know, there are times where you can bitch and moan about what Joe Girardi has done. Last night is not one of them. No, not at all. And, you know, for the Phillies, just forget about it. Do the men in black thing. You're done. Oh. Forget about this game completely. Because, again, it was just – it was good at bats. I mean, Knievel's not going to want to think about this for sure. You know, no. put it past him. Like, it was it was terrible – Obviously, you hate it. Maybe they use it as motivation, but for me, you just say it happens. I mean, well, it doesn't really, it doesn't really ever happen, but it happened. See you later. We got another one tonight. Yeah, Knable mentioned afterward that if he mar- makes the play on Marcana's hopper back to the mound, it's over. And he's probably right, but he didn't. And this is why the reason we're leading the show with it today. Very quickly, and you give it to me in 30 seconds. You say turn the page, and I've praised baseball players for having the ability to do it how tough is it to walk in the clubhouse today and do that when no you're knowing you're facing scherzer yeah the scherzer part's tough but i think this is a a veteran enough team where they can do it younger teams maybe will bring it into the next game but you know these guys have played enough ball and have seen enough ball games they know how to do that scherzer they're focused completely on him Baseball today presented to you by our good friends over at Manscaped. And yeah, the temperatures are starting to climb out there. You know what that means? We got a little pool time coming your way. That means you want to feel refreshed a little south of the equator. So let Manscaped take care of everything. I need you to follow this recipe. Grab your handy dandy lawnmower 4.0, gives your boys the classic trim, get all those loose hairs out of the way and feeling nice and smooth. Step Two, put on the crop exfoliator. It's infused with ingredients that can soothe, clear, and keep the skin on and around your groin feeling nothing but refreshed. Step three, get your crop gel. See where you're shaving with the unique clear shaving gel just for the groin area. It's got essential oils in there. Has you feeling fantastic. And then step four, it is time to shave. The crop shaver, it was designed for shaving the groin area with nothing but supreme confidence. Believe me, you will feel so much better all around your life when you're exercising, when you're in the pool, when you're just taking that walk or whenever that special someone wants to say, hey, how you doing? So it's this simple. Go to manscaped.com. You'll get 20% off and free shipping with the code baseball today. Once again, that is 20% off and free shipping with the code word baseball today at manscaped.com. All right, let's move on to a little showtime. Show, hey, best performance on the mound this year for him. Seven innings, no runs at Fenway, 11 strikeouts, no walks, 81 strikes in his 99 pitches, which is absolutely ridiculous. Do you think he will have a better season on the mound than in the batter's box? It's so hard to compare those two. You know what I mean? But... I think he will be a better pitcher this year than a hitter, just because I think it is a little bit easier to be a starting pitcher. Like you're, you're going to get those results when you have the stuff like he has, you know, he, yeah, he can locate, but he's got the pure stuff too, to get away with things when he doesn't locate. And, you know, some of his pitches are just different. You don't see splitters like that all the time, you know? So like he has a little bit of um, uniqueness to him as well on the mound and doesn't hurt that he, you know, throws upper nineties. So uh-huh. I think that's um, 
as good of a hitter as he is, and like he's going to be close to an elite hitter too. I, I just think that it's scary. It's scary to me. I was I was trying to formulate an answer to this question. I, and I go back to like my days, you know, in high school when I was doing this. Okay, and I think that the wear and tear that he's, he could be a better pitcher. I think if he just focused on that, which is crazy to think, cause he's already really good. I think, you know, playing every day, like it, it takes away from, you know, maybe some of the strength that he could have um, as a, as a pitcher, like maybe some of his, his, his leg stuff, but he's, he's, it's crazy to see. I mean, Rich Hill called him the, the greatest player on the planet right now. And uh, an article I read, I think sports illustrated had it. They said, this is the greatest game ever played at Fenway. The greatest game ever played at Fenway by a singular player. Like really, if you start to think about it, I mean, who does this besides him and Babe Ruth? I mean, no, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy, dude. It is. Here's the thing, right? I, I'm a I'm a huge Otani fan. I think they use him too much as a DH. I really do. I think they have to get him at least one day off a week. And it doesn't feel like they do. He's played 26 games this year. What what have they have played? 27 or something like that? It's probably him. Like he's saying he wants to play, uh, keep him in his routine. I I don't know, man. It's I, I agree with you. It's it's a huge workload, but we've been we said this last year when they said they were going to take the kitty gloves off. He went through it just fine. So I don't yeah. I don't know if like I don't know how we can sit here and say it's too much when he's just shown that he's, he's fine with it. Well, but he hasn't through, through a month so far, he has not hit well. He hasn't. His on-base yeah. percentage is 301. Last year it was 372. He's not walking as much, even though he's got Trout and Rendon back in that lineup with him. I thought for sure that, well, well that, that uh, actually it's reverse. So I screwed that up. But you, know, you, you get what I'm saying. I thought maybe his production would be at least on par with those guys back in the lineup. Uh, yeah, another reason I say that I think he could probably, he's probably going to put up better pitching numbers this year is because pitchers have to le- make less adjustments hmm. than a hitter does. You know, yep. a hitter has to go up there, and uh, again, you don't control the variables. And the more bats you have in this league, you know, guys are constantly trying to find out ways to expose whatever flaws you have in your swing. I mean, they they have teams of people on each in each organization looking at what you do wrong and trying to expose it as a hitter it's difficult you have to make constant adjustments and you have to be able to do that in real time it's difficult so you know i think shohei is still going to be up there you know at the end of the year where's his ops going to be you think it's going to be high eights probably oh yeah i I mean i think it can get there you know he's, he's under 700 at this point um the thing i love about him pitching and why i think he'll have a better year statistically as a pitcher than as a hitter comparatively speaking um his walks are way down five walks in five starts which is awesome for him 14 k's per nine which is up he's just he's one of a kind dude he's one of a kind yeah he's Um, striking out dudes and man he looks good all right um san diego padres they get a win over the miami marlins thanks to manny machado he supplied all the runs pair of solo shots Is it possible that a guy can have a $300 million contract and be underappreciated? I don't think Manny's underappreciated. I think that most people who follow the game understand he's on a Hall of Fame trajectory. Um, We know what he can do. He got paid that much money, which means people appreciate his skill level. I think he's just kind of underloved or just a little bit hated and, and, and I don't really get it. You know, I know that there's been some incidents on the field, but remember, this guy has been in the league since what? He was 20 years old. 19. 19 years old. We've seen this dude grow up on the baseball field in front of us and in big time situations. I mean, the Orioles teams that he was on, you know, with Buck, you know, they had some really good years. And like he was in the spotlight doing yeah. his thing as a young player. Um, I think all of us can relate to doing stupid stuff in our younger 20s. You know what I mean? His just so happened Don't to be all over, all over Sports Center. He's from South Florida, okay? And I think one reason people don't like him sometimes is he just doesn't care what you think. Like, I don't know why a society, we want people to care what we think so much. Man, he doesn't give a shit. And that's the, that's the attitude that a lot of these dudes from South Florida have. They're very confident. I've talked about that on this show a ton. You know, mm-hmm. guys like Nick Castellanos, uh, Jonathan India, Hosmer, all these dudes, like they're very confident in their abilities. So they don't care what you think. Like they know what they have in themselves and they're going to go out there and do the damn thing. 
Um, and I think maybe that sometimes rubs people the wrong way with Manny, but I think that people know how damn good he is. And unfortunately the West coast thing kind of is hurting Manny right now. Cause the games do start really late. Nobody on the East coast is staying up watching Padre games. It's just, mm-hmm. I, I get know. it. I, whenever I go to the East coast, I can't believe how late the sports are there. There's no way You're I right. can watch any West coast sports. So um, maybe in that regard, he's underappreciated, but dang, man, if you're around the game, you know, you know, just how good this guy is. And he's really shown it this year. I think part of the issue is he gets outshined by Tatis, even when Tatis isn't there, you know, wh- how many times have we mentioned, well, if the Padres offensively can just tread water till Tatis gets back, there are a ton of teams that would love to just have a Manny Machado in their lineup. Forget yes. about the rest of it. So I do think he is underappreciated. As strange as it sounds when a guy's one of the highest paid players in the game, like you look at the month of April and we were like, oh man, did you see what Nolan Arenado did this April? Manny Machado might've been better, dude. He might have been better than Nolan Arenado in April. They were certainly comparable. And oh, by the way, he's got a career OPS that is better than Arenado. Um, so I just, and it's interesting. I've, I don't know Manny that well. I, I've interviewed him a couple of times. I, I just saw him recently and shook hands with him, just checked in with him, said hi. Uh, and so I'm always curious about him. I've asked guys that have played with him in Baltimore, in Los Angeles, and in San Diego. And universally, the guy is really well-liked in the clubhouse. Really well-liked. Now, he did some fucked up things, the releasing of the bat or whatever. You're right. That's growing up in front of us, and I guarantee he wishes that he could have it back but I'm not going to focus on all that stuff. I love watching the dude play both sides of the baseball. 100%. I mean, again, if we all had to grow up in front of cameras, there'd be a lot of stupid stuff out there. Okay. I I, I mean, I know Manny, not, not well, but I know a lot of the people around him and the same thing. Everyone loves him. He's got a good support cast around him. Mm -hmm. So that's, he just, he doesn't care what you think. Right. That's it, man. And like, why should he, you know, like if you're going to come at him without knowing him, why does he have to care what you think if he doesn't know you? And one other thing that in this sport is critical to being successful and accountable is he plays baseball seven times in his career, at least 153 games in the lockout short, uh, not lockout, sorry. In the pandemic shortened season, he played all 60 games. So he is available. And it's one of the reasons why you and I both think he's going to have a shot at 3,000 hits. I have a question for you. Yes. Was there a game like 163 or I guess a game 61 in the 2020 season? Mm -mm. Because he has 60 games played. That should be bold because he can't be any better than that. On his baseball reference page, it's not bold. Should be bold. You're right. Interesting. I got to look into that. Yeah, because he bolded out one year. He went 162. It might have been. the. Was it the year that he got traded where he was 162? No, that was 2015 in okay. Baltimore. I'm going to look into this. I'm the bolded police on baseball reference. So. Oh, nice. Nice. A uh, guy who's going to miss a few games, it sounds like, unfortunately, is Carlos Correa. The Minnesota Twins got dinged up. Um, let's see here. We think we're not 100% sure. Might have a non-displaced fracture of the right middle finger. That's according to Dan Hayes, who covers the Twins for the Athletic. So the big news is that the Twins are supposed to make a corresponding move to bring up the 2017 number one overall draft pick, Royce Lewis, in which case he's going to get a chance to play shortstop. Nobody wants to see Carlos Correa be injured, but how excited are you to see him? If it happens? Really, really, really excited to see him. Um, you know, coming into last year, he didn't play during the 2020 season. He was in the minor leagues. Nobody did. Uh, I think he was at the alternate site the whole time. Then coming into last year in spring training, the people were just like raving about this dude. Like, can't wait to see what he, what he can do. Then he gets hurt with the ACL. So he misses all last year too. But um, I remember, you know, the things people were saying about him and now we're going to get to see it. He's killing it at uh, the triple a level. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be an adjustment going to the big leagues, but uh, I think, yeah, you want Carlos out there, but as a twins fan, you've been hearing about Royce for a while. You've seen him in a few games in spring training, but, His athleticism, his uh, baseball acumen is going to be on full display now. It's going to have to be. And if you want a comparison, I I don't want to say he's Byron Buxton at shortstop, but like he's got tools like Byron Buxton and he plays shortstop. And he can, before the ACL, you know, he was, 
he was like a top tier sprint type of guy. So we'll mm-hmm. see if how that affected him. Um, but I'm very curious to see how it goes. I'm very, very curious. He's ready. It's amazing. Um, I forgot about him. I just forgot about him, you know, cause he has, he's been out of sight, out of mind. And I was like, man, I wonder whatever's going to happen to him. He is part of a fascinating 2017 draft class, because I think this draft class could go several different ways. Um, Royce Lewis, Hunter Green, Mackenzie Gore, Brendan McKay, who unfortunately I don't know if he's ever going to make it as a first baseman or a pitcher. Who knows? Kyle Wright, Paven Smith, who just had a huge homer the other day, was drafted seventh. Keston Hira, who we're still all waiting on, was ninth. Joe Adele, who just got sent back down, was tenth. Then it's Jake Berger, who's been playing with the White Sox because of injuries. Shane Boz. Trevor Rogers, who is the first all-star, but there's some other guys in here that are, have amazing stories. Clark Schmidt of the Yankees, Evan White, the guy who got paid by the Mariners and hasn't done anything. David Peterson, who's pitched well for the Mets. DL Hall by the Orioles, who we keep hearing is like on the cusp of being there. And Tanner Houck. That is an amazing, amazing group. That's pretty that good. Just, right? Like, that draft class could go so many different directions over the next several years. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, I think back to my draft class, there was not a ton of guys like that who could impact the big leagues. It's just, it just doesn't happen all the time. It's crap shoot, but that's that class. Very good. Yeah. Well, scouts are getting it right, huh? Well, it, ha- it has the potential to be amazing. Cause but even to just make it to the big leagues, even in the first round, like all those mm-hmm. guys, you know, and, and contributing, like I know all those names. Yeah. Well, there were a few more that I skipped over as well. That's, I mean, you go back to most draft classes. I implore people to do this all the time because it'll stop you from prospect tugging. Go back to a bunch of different draft classes. Mm-hmm. Go to the first round, go to the second round. You're, you're going to know maybe in 60 picks, you're going to know 10 names maybe. Yeah. Well, it's why I laugh at this, right? Last week I was in Vegas for the NFL draft. And what's the one thing they do on Sunday, the day after the seven rounds are finished? They hand out draft grades. And I'm like, what, what are you people doing? Well, you know, our, our producer or our editors asked us to do draft grades. That's the dumbest thing ever. Don't yeah. do draft grades before they start playing. Like, you're come set- <laughs> do draft grades in four or five years when we actually have some data to collect. Don't give me draft grades on draft night. We, yeah, you're setting yourself up for failure there. I don't know if this is true, but I saw a clip of this. Um, somebody reading an article about the Seahawks draft when they drafted Russell Wilson, Bruce mm-hmm. Irvin and Bobby Wagner, and they gave him an F plus. Mm. Yep. And just, just tore it apart. Yeah. You know what the F plus stands for? Fuck you. That's <laughs> yeah. what it stands for. Cause they drafted two hall of famers and a guy that helped them win a super bowl. So ha. All right. Uh, Orioles. I don't know how this kind of slid past everybody. They b- recently broke out their own home run chain. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's the O's logo. Do you dig it, or is it too much of a Padres home run chain ripoff? I don't mind it. I mean, there's only so many things you can do. Uh, I really like the Brewers ringing the bell because I feel like the pitcher hears it. And he's like, fuck. Yeah. You know, uh, the chain's cool. I think. Okay, no, I don't like it. I'm sorry. Don't. No, I don't. It's played out. It's played out. There's, I mean, I was trying to give him credit. I really was right there, but I well, can't get, I, I don't like it. It's, it's, what do you need that for? So there's been so much bad baseball played in Baltimore. Yeah. Which is a great sports town. Yeah. That, you know what? If this gets the players excited and gets the fans excited, I'm fine with it. Like, I'm sure the guys in San Diego are probably like, really, dude? But, it's not it's like that's like a, yeah, but like we, a walmart version right yeah but we've seen we've seen teams like in college football you know up the ante on the uh on the hurricanes turnover chain so I, it doesn't bother me like whatever go, go do whatever makes you happy i'm but is that up in the ante is it that looks like it's plastic well it might, it might yeah it's definitely not the padres got a jeweler to do it i mean i know they did i know they did and that thing's awesome looking Right. This thing is 
a watered down version. It's out. We're out. Let me give you guys some ideas. Like, let's put a throne in there, like a bat throne. You can go sit on the throne once you hit a homer. You can do a crown. I don't think anyone's doing a crown in the show. Like, there's, come on, dude. The bell is great. The bell okay. is great. But you're in on the on the Blue Jays home run jacket, aren't you? I wasn't into it, but now I I, I think it's good because it was original. So I know it wasn't original. It I liked it. Is. Yeah, I mean, who else was putting on a jacket when you hit a home run? I'm just thinking like football teams. I feel like have probably done something like that. But well, you know, Chad Ochocinco was the one who was taking it the next level. Shit. I'm I'm into it. I'm into like have fun for sure. Right. You know, hitting a home run is hard, and when you do it, let's celebrate it. Um, but you can't use a plastic chain. It's the show, baby. And maybe it's not a plastic chain. Please tell me if I'm wrong. But it really, yeah, sure we need to get like to, one. We need to get to the bottom of that. I'll have to maybe tap in on my order. Like who's who's? Let me just check this out. Who's earning the most money there? Probably Chris Davis still. <laughs> <laughs> i know rugi uh has made some money in his career torinos has been around a while trey mancini probably made some money and these pitchers no not a lot of money on that team not a lot no, no. not a lot okay nope. i get it now they're being frugal now i appreciate it <laughs> what do you have coming up on john boy Dude, I'm going uh, right after this. We're doing the Talking Baseball series recaps. We'll be going over this week's action. I think I'm doing the AL recap, so I got to go and read all about what happened. Um, and that's it, man. See you on Monday for the show again. Yeah. Uh, once again, Tyler Glass now is out that episode. And this morning, two hours from now, I will be recording an episode for Monday with Adam Wainwright. Wow. Yeah. Look at Very you, see, Rosie. You're so yeah. popular. Everyone wants to talk to you, man. That's a good I, one. Wayne, yeah, okay. it is. It'll be great. We've got so much ground to cover. And, you know, in his last year, and I don't know if you've been following what he's been doing. He's like yesterday in San Francisco. This is going to be his last trip to that ballpark unless they play each other in the playoffs. He's walking around during the day and taking photos and meeting people behind the scenes. So we're going to kind of talk to him a little bit about that. I imagine it's a very emotional journey for him, you know? I love it. I love the guys are like having perspective about careers and, you know, like capturing the moment. That, totally. That's real. Totally. All right, listen, everybody have a good, safe weekend out there. Enjoy your baseball. Enjoy the time with your family and friends or whatever the heck you're doing out there. And uh, for our outstanding producer, Robbie Scirocco, for T. Plouffe, I'm Chris Rose. We will see you Monday on baseball today.